Hey there, my name is Eugene and welcome to another Worker Bee video. First off, thank you so much to all the new subscribers that have come on board over the last couple of months. It's so great to have you here. And if you're new here, consider subscribing if you enjoyed this video by the end of it. So I've been reading the comments and I've seen a lot of you want a better peek into the editing process of our workflow. So today we're gonna to do just that. We're gonna dive into an architectural interior photograph we did for a client recently. And we're gonna take you all the way from raw image, what we do in Lightroom, dive into Photoshop, go through that process, and then show you how we get to that final, beautiful, crisp commercial image at the end. So if this is something you're interested in, you're in the right place, let's dive right into it. So the first thing we're gonna do in Lightroom is gather all of our images. So for our architectural photos, we usually bracket exposures. So we have a few different exposures of each image. And this image in particular is a stitch, which means we use a tilt shift lens to kind of shoot multiple photos and we're gonna combine them into one large kind of wide, large scale image. If you're not familiar with tilt shift lenses, we actually made a detailed video about it showing you what it is and how it works and when you might want to use it. This is critical for architecture and interior work, so make sure you check that out. So now that we have all the exposures for both of our images that will be stitched together in this case, we're gonna pick the best kind of middle exposure that'll give us the most to work with. The others are there just in case we need them, but most of the time you don't actually end up using them. You can kind of work off your base exposure. So pick the one with a nice middle ground, and then we're gonna start just like finding a nice white balance. I'm gonna try to prioritize the interior here when picking the white balance, because we're gonna do the exterior windows separately. So once you've kind of picked your middle exposure, you wanna pick the same exposure on the other stitched image, and we're gonna sync those two images. Now we're gonna select both of those exposures and stitch them together right into Lightroom so that we can still kind of use their raw capabilities. Just the thing I'm gonna do for this image is turn off the auto settings. Sometimes this does a good job, so toggle it on and off and decide for your own image. Now that we have the full stitched image in Lightroom, I'm gonna make a virtual copy of it and we're gonna actually set two white balances, one for the interior of the building and one for the exterior windows and stuff outside. So we want the perfect color balance for each of those two because we're gonna separate them and combine them in Photoshop. Now you don't have to do this for every single image, but if there's a dramatic color difference between the inside and outside, it's worth it. It's gonna make the images that much better and really doing a bit of prep in terms of cutting things out will kind of save you time later on in the edit when you inevitably will need those masks. For one of the last steps in Lightroom, I'm gonna make some minor adjustments. And my goal here is really to create a nice base image. It shouldn't be too contrasty, you know, the color shouldn't be too intense, but kind of nice detail in the shadows and the highlights. So we really have like a good foundation to work on in Photoshop. Now in this case, I'm not gonna apply all these minor adjustments onto the warm exterior layer because we're really just focusing on the interior space. So once that's done, we're gonna select both of these virtual copies and we're gonna open them as layers in Photoshop. So they're right on top of each other, perfectly aligned. Now that everything's loaded in Photoshop, I'm gonna put my warm exterior layer on top and now it's time for the most boring part of the process, which is cutting out all the windows and kind of like separating those layers. Now this is time consuming, so I always like to recommend a podcast. Right now, Becca and I have been obsessed with a podcast called The Dropout. It's a true crimey thing where they follow the trial of Theranos CEO Elizabeth Holmes and all the wild people associated with that story. I really recommend it, check it out. Back to that, I use a pen tool for this and create a path for each window. Then once all of that is done, and again, this will take a while. Yes, you're not doing it wrong. It's just a time consuming process. We're gonna select all of the paths and turn them into a selection with a slight feather. After I do that, I'm gonna create a layer mask with the window selection so that we only see the windows come through in the top warm exterior layer. The next step is the cleanup. And this is like one of those parts where when you turn the layer on and off after, it looks like magic. So what we're gonna do is remove all the visual clutter in the image. Now, this is definitely things like dirt and kind of like random little bits and greeblies on the ground. You know, it could be scuffs on the wall, marks on the furniture. Um, it could also be things like, you know, sprinkler heads or fire alarms or weird access panels. Basically the way I think about it is like anything that the architect didn't envision 
in the original space, but kind of like had to put there. All that stuff you can kind of remove. You obviously don't want to completely transform the space, but a lot of the small visual clutter that is put there by regulation can be photoshopped out. I do this on its own cleanup layer and this is very important and I use a healing brush and a clone stamp for the majority of the cleanup. This is one of those steps that makes a huge difference. So really take some time and commit to cleaning up the image as it'll make it way better in the end. It's time to clean up these color casts. So I'm gonna selectively desaturate colors using the color picker in the hue and saturation adjustment layer settings. This is a largely white space, so we're gonna take out the majority of the colors and then add a bit back in. But just like we masked the windows, you can mask different surfaces to do more specific color cast removal. Once I'm in a happy spot with the desaturation layer, I'm gonna copy the window mask onto this layer and invert it so the edits are being applied to everything but the windows. The image is feeling a bit dead now and we wanna make it a big, bright, airy space. So why don't we use the curves to do an overall exposure bump and then just copy that layer, invert the mask so it's not showing anything. And we're gonna use a gradient to selectively brighten the areas that are still feeling a little bit dark. I like to think of this step as relighting the space. One of the aspects of stitching with a tilt shift lens is that there's some fall off at the corners of the images. So we're gonna fix that and any other areas that are still feeling a bit too dark, we're gonna just brighten them up. I just noticed I didn't mask this railing earlier, but it's really obvious that there's a cast on it. So let's just brush that out quickly. We're getting close to finishing the image, but it's just looking way too flat right now. So why don't we add in some contrast to give it some crispness and make it pop. First, I'm gonna use curves to clip the shadows and highlights a little bit. Then I like to add another curves layer on top and set it to the linear contrast preset to just kind of bring everything in a little tighter. I'm also gonna increase the overall saturation, but as I start to do this, I'm noticing a bit too much of a yellow cast on the white tile. So I think I'm gonna go back into the desat layer from earlier and remove some more of that cast. Now it's time to add some color back in, that's right. Using the color balance adjustment layer, I'm gonna add a touch of warmth into the highlights and the shadows. It's subtle, but it really sells it because you know surfaces are never gray or like perfectly white or black. There's always a little bit of bounce of color from all the objects in the space, outdoors. So let's add a bit of warmth back in. All right, we're pretty much done now. And the last step is to crop and sharpen the image. For my working files, and if you do this professionally, I usually like to leave the PSDs fully uncropped. And then if we're exporting JPEGs or something, I will crop those to send to the client. In this case, you know, we're doing this for you and for Instagram and our portfolio. So we're just gonna crop the image to a place that we really like. And then I'm gonna use the Smart Sharpen tool to sharpen the image as well. So that's it. I'd love to know what you thought about the whole process. Um, if this was helpful, how you found the level of detail. You know, we started with these two raw images and then we ended up with this beautiful, you know, publishable architectural interior image. I think it turned out really great. I'm excited to add this image to our portfolio on our website. And I hope you learned something along the way as well. You know, we're doing a lot more photography behind the scenes, kind of like product breakdowns, shoot breakdowns. So if this is something you're interested in, I would love for you to join us and hit subscribe. If you're already a subscriber, make sure you hit that notification bell because we've been working on some videos behind the scenes and we'll be releasing them more often. So if you want to find out when the next one drops, make sure you hit that notification bell. That's all for me. My name is Eugene. It's been a pleasure chatting with you and sharing our architectural interiors editing workflow, and I hope to see you next time. Bye.